symmetrical components so this is our today's topic and we will learn together so what are the symmetrical components and why we need them so basically the symmetrical component uh, are required to solve the unbalanced systems so in the method of symmetrical components we are simplifying the three phase unbalanced systems into a balanced phasers and these balanced phasers are symmetrical so it means that we can resolve a three phase ac system that is unbalanced into three balanced systems and these this these systems are called as symmetrical components so uh, these components are applicable to current and voltages and these permits modeling of unbalanced systems and networks by a balanced system and networks so do these symmetrical components are also applicable for the normal system voltages and current the answer is yes if there is no fault condition but the, there is symmetry of the voltages or the symmetry of the currents are disturbed you can always analyze and use these symmetrical components in order to do the evaluation or analysis of a system so why we want to convert an unbalanced system or three phase systems well there are different reasons and requirements because first of all it's easier to solve a balanced system that is three phase you can always solve it to a per phase basis and secondly each symmetrical component has different characteristics and different behavior when it's fitted to the system for example the positive sequence component is similar to the mean uh, phasers of the fundamental frequency of the of, of the system it means that the rotation direction of uh, rotation or we can say the direct direction of the sequence is abc if in, it is in the system then the direction of rotation for the positive sequence will be also abc and the negative sequence the direction of rotation will be reverse it will be acb and zero sequence will be having all in phase so the positive sequence will produce a rotating magnetic field that is in uh, the correct direction that is as per required in the system there is negative sequence is producing a magnetic field that is in the reverse direction to the main positive sequence component or to the actual system voltage or actual sequence so and the zero sequence these all phasers are in phase so if all three quantities are in phase as per the vector algebra we know that these will all three will be added up and these will be flowing to the neutral so now we know that the z if we are able to dissolve the unbalanced system into three quantities three balanced quantities now we know very well what is the impact of each component in the system symmetrical components so for example unbalanced system is divided into positive sequence negative sequence and a zero sequence so we have all three different components and we are we now all know that what is the impact of each component in the system negative sequence obviously is producing a reverse flux and also it is responsible to create heating effect in the generators and the rotors so now we will see a brief description about the balance and unbalanced systems or we can say symmetrical and unsymmetrical vectors so balance system or balance vector is a vector in which the magnitude of all three vectors are the same and the phase angle is also in a symmetry so all the vectors all the phases for example here abc are in uh, in a difference of 120 degree so all phases are 120 degree apart whereas if the system become unbalanced because of fault or any other unbalanced load condition in that case you can see the balance is now out the unbalanced system can be if the magnitude of the phasers are not the same or if the even angle is disturbed 
then we can say this system is an unbalanced system. So if the system is balanced, we can do the calculations in the per phase basis. So we can, for example, I can do all my calculations for phase A and then simply multiply it with 120 and 240 degrees to get the values of phase C and B. So the calculations of a balance systems are done per phase basis. Similarly, the three phase short circuit is example of a balanced short circuit in which uh, the symmetrical, you can say that it could be called as a symmetrical fault. And for this one, you can al also adopt the per phase basis methodology. You don't need the symmetrical components for symmetrical faults. So for uh, for the unbalanced fault or non-symmetrical faults, so obviously you will be needing a symmetrical component method. So here you can see this is an example. We have a unbalanced vector. So you can see this is VA, VB and VC. And first of all, we have divided this vector. We have created the three components out of it. So component number one, positive sequence component, component number two, that is a negative sequence component and component number three, which is a zero sequence component. So first step is in the symmetrical component method, we are dividing a unbalanced system into three different balanced systems. So actually these systems are not available in the network. These are all theoretical values. These are, we are calculating it in order to find out different uh, components and it's giving us ease in the calculations. So here you can see this is an example of a balanced system. So we have a balanced three phase voltage and balanced load. So this is an equivalent circuit for the balanced system. So as I told you, you can easily change it to a per phase, a simple network, and then you can do the calculations for a single phase basis and simply you need to multiply with the symmetrical angles like alpha or alpha square or 120 or 240. So later in this video, we will also learn about the alpha operators. That is very important for the symmetrical components. So this is the way by which we are doing the calculations for the balance systems. So Mr. Charles Leger Fortescue in 1918 presented a paper in which he demonstrated that any set of n unbalanced phasors that is any such polyphase signal could be expressed as a sum of n symmetrical set of balanced phasors for value of n that are prime. Only a single frequency component is re represented by the phasor. So first of all, the phasors are representing a single frequency components. These are not applicable, for example, for harmonics. Secondly, the theory was presented in 1980 and it was presented by Mr. Charles. And this, in his theory, he used a term like n number of unbalanced phasors can be represented by n number of symmetrical set of balanced phasors. So it's not three, it could be any prime numbers. So this is an amazing theory based on which the all symmetrical components uh, theories are derived. Here we will see an example in which we have presented uh, unbalanced systems. So we have VA and we have VB and VC. So we have three phase systems. In, in this system, you can see this is a highly unbalanced system. And in, in this unbalanced systems, not only the magnitude, but the angles are also disturbed. So first step is to create three balanced systems from this unbalanced systems. So there are calculations involved. So after if you do the calculations, you can get the positive sequence, the negative sequence and zero sequence components. These are all coming from the calculations that we will see later on. But just for sake of understanding now that how the symmetrical components are basically developed. So here you can see this is a positive sequence component. And the rotation of the phaser is counterclockwise or we can also call it as anticlockwise for the positive sequence. 
so if you see if you consider or imagine that these rotors are rotating anti-clockwise in this direction so you can see in the positive sequence first phase a is coming reaching to its peak value then behind phase b is coming and then phase c is coming so the positive sequence phase rotation is counterclockwise and the phase sequence is a b and c similarly if you see the negative sequence here the phase rotation again is counterclockwise or anticlockwise and you can see the a is first coming reaching to its maximum value then c is reaching to its maximum value and then b is reaching to its maximum value it means that positive sequence and negative sequence both are phases are rotating anti or counterclockwise but the phase sequence or we can say phase rotation here in the positive sequence is abc whereas the phase rotation in the negative sequence is acb zero sequence here you can see these are all in phase there could be an angle of negative sequence it's not necessary that these are at zero degrees so all three systems can have some angle so here you can see the phase a has some angle almost 120 degree here positive sequence va1 starts with almost 120 degrees whereas va2 is starting from 240 degrees and you can see v0 zero sequence voltage is somewhere at 60 degrees so all these systems has the magnitude and as well as the angles so now is the process that we will add all these components and we will construct a unbalanced systems from three balanced systems so first of all i have taken the i want to construct the unbalanced system of phase a so i have taken the balance component of positive sequence and put it here in and i have make it a va1 in the next step we have taken the negative sequence component and we have added it and in the third step we have taken a zero sequence component so sum of positive sequence component va1 for phase a negative sequence component for phase a va2 and zero sequence component will formulate an unbalanced phase a voltage so you can see here clearly that unbalanced voltage is the sum of three vectors or phasors which belongs to a balanced system so in this way we are doing our calculations as well so similarly for phase b we will take this b phasor first i will start to construct and add and calculate the phase b so then in the next we have added added here to vb2 and then in the next phase we have added uh, vb0 so all three are equal so you can see here hence we have constructed a phase vb voltages again phase vb voltage which is an unbalanced belongs to unbalanced system is a, is hence is equal to the sum of three balance phasors belongs to three balance systems so similarly we will draw for the phase c so we i will add start to add the uh, vc1 the po uh, positive sequence voltage for the phase c the negative sequence voltage for the phase c and then finally zero sequence voltage for the phase c so hence we have successfully first of all decompose the unbalanced system into three balanced systems and then we i have shown you when you add up all these different components you will get the original voltages so hence we can define uh, the symmetrical component is a method of symmetrical component is used to simplify fault analysis by converting a three phase unbalanced systems into two sets of balanced phasors and set of single phase phasors or symmetrical components 
these sets of phases are called positive sequence, negative sequence and zero sequence components. So here you can see this is an unbalanced system once again and we have decomposed it to a positive sequence counterclockwise direction. For you can see first positive sequence phase red phase is coming and then yellow phase and then blue phase is coming reaching to its max. So again you can see the phase sequence here is ABC. For negative sequence first phase A is coming then phase C is coming then phase B is coming. The rotation again again here is a counterclockwise and the phase sequence here is ACB. So this is a misconcept that the phasers negative sequence phasers rotate uh, in opposition to the positive sequence phasers. So all the phasers are actually rotating always in a counterclockwise direction. They can be differentiated by the phase sequence by a phase sequence in which each voltage reaching to its max value. This we will learn in the later stage of the video. So faults can be characterized into two different types. One is symmetrical faults. Another one is unsymmetrical faults. So the symmetrical faults, for example, three phase short circuit. So you can see all three phases are shorted together through the fault impedance. So you can see all the currents are same and angles are also not disturbed. So these are the type of the faults are having a very high fault currents and these are very severe faults. The occurrence frequency or the percentage of occurrence is very small 5% to 10% and another type of three phase fault is triple line to ground fault. So total appearance of such type of fault is 2 to 5% in the system. Symmetrical faults so uh, unsymmetrical faults so these are the faults which are very common and which are less severe than the symmetrical faults. There are mainly three types of unsymmetrical fault for example line to ground, line to line and double line to ground. Double line to ground. Line to ground fault is most common fault and it is almost 65% to 70% of the all fault types. 15 to 20 percent faults are double to line to ground fault and causes the two conductor to make contact with the ground. If you like to know the presence of symmetrical components in different types of fault, for example, for single phase to neutral, the zero sequence component is available, the negative sequence component is available and the positive sequence component is also available. The percentage of such type of fault is 63 percent. Line to line fault, the zero sequence component is not available, negative sequence component is available and positive sequence component is also available. So the percentage of such fault is 11%. For double line to neutral fault, zero sequence is available, negative sequence is also available and the positive sequence is also available. And such type of fault are most 2%. Three phase faults. There is no zero sequence, there is no negative sequence, there is only positive sequence and such type of faults are 2% in the system. Single phase to ground fault, zero sequence, yes, available. Negative sequence is also available and the positive sequence is also available. And single phase to ground is, you can see 15% uh, faults are available. Line to line ground, uh, line to line to ground faults, zero sequence, Yes, available, negative sequence available and positive sequence is also available. Three phase to ground, CO sequence is available, negative sequence is available, positive sequence is available and others constitute 4%. So this is an Excel sheet that's basically used to convert a phase values to the symmetrical components. So here you can see if the system is balanced so all three voltages are same and sequence is also okay. So in this way you can see you have a positive sequence available and you don't have zero sequence and you don't have a negative sequence in this case. So this is an example of balance system. So now we'll consider for example if we have a fault only on in red phase. So red phase current will be high. So for example if the fault is only in the red phase so you can see in this case phase to red phase to ground or phase to ground 
we have positive sequence available we have negative sequence available here uh, we have zero sequence available positive sequence available and also the ne negative sequence is available if we have single phase to ground fault in a system so here you can see this is single phase to ground yes 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 so all three sequence components are available and same we have seen through the excel sheet so now consider the case of phase to phase fault so phase to, in the phase to phase faults the angle uh, between v and v vb is 180 degree apart the series of uh, minus 120 so if you put these values and even the magnitudes are same for the currents so these are shown here voltage but we consider as a current here so you can see in case of phase to phase faults zero sequence component here is not available okay and we have only negative sequence component and positive sequence components and you can see another thing that uh, the positive sequence and negative sequence both have a uh, difference of almost 60 degrees so if you see if you come down you can see here this is the positive sequence which is having the magnitude uh, 58 percent of 0.58 and there is that is minus 30 degrees and the negative sequence will be in that case again 58 percent or 0 0.85 point, uh, 0 0.58 and it is plus 30 degrees so this will be the case of phase to phase faults so if you see this chart line to line faults zero sequence is not available and positive sequence and negative sequence are available so by seeing this you can do different experiments here so if i make it again a balance system So you can see we have only positive sequence here now if i increase the magnitude of phase b only so if you increase the magnitude of phase b only so there is symmetry of angles is here but symmetry is not there in the magnitude so you can see we have phase a red color phase b blue color and phase c which is in green color so you can see if we have unbalance in the voltage or magnitude so you can see it will create a zero sequence component positive sequence component and the negative sequence components and each component will have its own angle so here you can see this is the angle of zero sequence which is minus 120 degrees this is angle of positive sequence which is zero and this is angle of negative sequence which is 120 so if i now put it back so now if I change and disturb the angle for the phase B, put it to 60 degrees. So here you can see if you even a magnitude are the same, but if I you disturb the angle, so it will also create a positive sequence at the angle 60 degrees, negative uh, the zero sequence 0 0.67 at the angle of 60 degrees, positive sequence 0 0.33 at the angle of 0 degrees and the negative sequence 0.67 at the angle of minus 60 degrees so this here you can see these are the symmetrical components that will be generated similarly you can convert the uh, sequence components from the magnitude and angles to the phase value so if i put the one here we have only positive sequence components so you can see if you convert it into the phase values all the phases has the same voltage magnitude is same and the angle has a symmetry here so you can see we have only positive sequence if i put only negative sequence here so you can see if i put only negative sequence so you can see here the angles are 120 degree apart so we have phase b and c 1 1 and phase a is 2 at the angle 0 so you can see in this way you can uh, draw or get the phase value again easily Calculation of balance system. So what is the phase uh, uh, in the balance systems? We have a symmetry We have in the balance systems We have symmetry in the magnitude and we have symmetry in the angle So you can see if we have a symmetrical system. We have a balance systems You 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 are using the factor under root 3 which is 1.732 In order to convert the phase values into the line value. So you can see the quantity that is uh, flowing through this coil is called as phase current and the quantity that is flowing in the line is called as line current and the voltage across this coil are called as
phase voltage and the voltage across the line are called as line voltage so in the delta the relationship is the line voltages are equal to phase voltage so you can see this is a coil so the voltage across coil and voltage across line you can easily see both are at the same point so it will remain same whereas the line voltage current will be equal to under root 3 times the phase current so in the star the relationship is you can see the current in the coil and then the line is the same so line current is equal to phase current but in this case you can see the line voltage will be equal to under root 3 times the phase voltage had to do a trial rule so this is a very important uh, method in order to understand different vector concepts so this the concept of head to tail rule is very simple but also this is very very applicable so i will be using head to tail rule and uh, to show you how these symmetrical components works and if you understand this a uh, very basic concepts so you are also your knowledge about the symmetrical components and it will be really increased and it will be very easy for you to learn different concepts related to symmetrical components so consider we have two vectors so this is vector number 1 we can call it as va and we have vector number 2 here so which is called vb and then we have another vector which is called vc so we have three balance voltages and we for example consider that these are at we are talking about here the star system so we have three voltages so we have here va vb and vc so if i want to measure the voltage between these two points it will be equal to the difference of voltage between a and b so it will be va minus vb so the important thing is the line voltage between two phases is not vab is not equal to va plus vb in fact it is va minus vb and reason behind it is that for example i have two terminals of the battery for example if the two terminals are coming from a source and this terminal is at the voltage 1 and this terminal is at the voltage 1 as well plus 1 so if you measure the voltage the voltage difference between these two terminal will be here for example if this is va and vb so vab if you put the voltmeter here so it will show 0 volts okay so it says 0 volts hence for the vectors we are for the line voltages we are using a difference again if the va is at 10 volts and vb in the at the dc 20 volts so you can see va minus vb equal to 10 minus 20 so it will be minus 10 volts so again now if i want to measure the voltage between these two points vab i have to put va minus vb so if in the head to head to tail rule if you want to do the minus you just need to take the direction in the reverse so direction will be reverse this will be minus uh okay so i am now measuring va vac which is equal to va minus vc so this is vc this will be a minus vc so head to tail rule means you have to take the vector you have to put this way tail to the head of the another vector if you want to do the addition so i will take it so i am adding the vector va and minus vc so i am doing the addition of two vectors so this is called head to tail rule and then you just simply you will be adding these two and you will be getting this vector which is v a c okay 
so you can see the length of the VAC is more than VA or VC so the magnitude of VA is equal to the magnitude of VC but not equal to the magnitude of VAC if you measure it if you draw this graphically by yourself and measure this the length of the VAC it will be 1.73 times or under root 3 times the magnitude of VA or VB or VC so from here if you have symmetrical systems if you want to find out the line voltages you just need to remember under root 3 but for the unbalanced system this is not applicable so this is the this is the way how we are calculating the symmetrical systems so again the angle of minus vc to va is you can see if the v is at the angle 0 60 degrees an angle of vac will be half and that will be equal to 30 degrees so we can see we can say that VAC if VA naught is equal to magnitude of VA is 10 so VAC will be equal to 17.32 at the angle 30 degrees so this will be VAC so if you know the head to tail rule you can easily find out the values or you can also use the symmetrical components if you want to calculate different uh, results so this is the way we are doing the calculations in the head to tail rule and that will be really beneficial uh, for us when we are doing different symmetrical components values so here the task is we will do um, we will calculate the sum of three vectors if the system is balanced by using a head to tail rule so here you can see we have three system VA vb and vc and it is perfectly a symmetrical system so if you add this so if you add all these things so first i will add from at va to uh, vector b so as per head to tail rule i have to take this vector and i have to match tail of this vector of b to head of vector a so i will draw this like this one so you can see this is simple head to tail rule and then after that i will put this vector c and i will just take it to back to you using head to tail rule so the sum will be we i'm coming back to the origin here so it means that sum of the system of a balanced system is always sum of all three component is zero so it means that there is no neutral current or there is no zero sequence component current of a balanced system so the com formula for the zero sequence component is 1 by 3 in and this vector sum of va plus vb plus vc so if you combine all these three in a balanced system if you remember just head to tail rule you don't you don't need to remember this formula always so just practice with head to tail rule and it will give you a good idea that how these equations are working so you can see this is i naught will be equal to zero in a balanced system so now we will see the difference between vectors and the phasor so vector is uh, basically having a two parameters one is magnitude other one is direction so a vector quantity has two characteristics one is magnitude another one is direction whereas the phasor has three characteristics the phasor has magnitude the phasor has direction and the phasor has the rotation as well so phasor has three uh, basically quantities we can also call phasors as a rotating vector as well so now we we can see we are representing phasor with the formula with the speed the phasors are rotating at the speed which is equal to 2 pi f t so where 2 pi is basically in the radian pi is showing that it is equal to 180 degrees so 2 pi means is equal to 360 degrees so 360 is forming a complete cycle so the rotation um, 
uh, formula 2 pi ft that these two pi is in, uh, basically indicating that this is for a complete cycle uh, circle so for a complete cycle frequency is 50 hertz it means that this vector is rotating 50 times and it's completing a cycle 50 times in a t is a, is basically for a second so if the frequency is 50 hertz it means that the phaser rotates 50 cycles in one second this is the definition of a rotation of the phaser so here you can see this is a phaser so this is at the angle 0 you can see the phaser is shown here at angle 30 when it start rotating so magnitude is here and at for example 90 the phaser is here the angle is shown here the magnitude is maximum at 90 and angle <coughs> and you can see it's shown here so you can see here the rotation of the vector is always counterclockwise so we are drawing the vector from 0 degree 30 degree plus 60 degree plus and 90 degree plus so it means that this is the plus angles and we are drawing the phasers always you have seen the phasers been drawn from 0 to 180 and then back to 360s so if the rotation is clockwise it means that you will not draw the phaser in this direction you will draw the phasers in the reverse direction so have you seen any presentation in your books that we are drawing the vector in this direction which is a clockwise that's for example minus 30 and 9 min uh, and minus 90 so we are not showing the phasers in this direction in our books so that's why this is a wrong theory that the positive sequence rotation is uh, anti-clockwise or counterclockwise and the negative sequence or rotation is clockwise the right terminology is that both positive and negative sequence rotation is counterclockwise but the sequence is different as i told before for the positive sequence it is abc and for the negative sequence it is acb so depending upon different countries some countries have the rotation abc and some countries could have the normal rotation of positive sequence to acb in this case the negative sequence rotation will be always opposite to the positive sequence rotation so here you can see the rotation so this is the generator so you can see i have drawn the generator start rotating from 0 45 and 90 so you can see phase a is reaching to its maximum value first and then after that phase c is reaching its maximum value phase a then phase c is reaching, reaching its maximum value and then phase b is reaching to its maximum value so by seeing this we can say that the phase rotation of this system is a c b so we will call rotation or a sequence you can see is ACB so this is the right way of understanding the phase rotation so this is an example of phase rotation ABC so you can see it doesn't matter the generator is moving clockwise or anti-clockwise phasers will always or rotate in a counterclockwise direction so here you can see in this one the phase A is reaching its max first and then phase b is reaching it to its max and then phase c is reaching to its max value so you can see we can say that the phase rotation here is a b and then c so this is the right way of explaining the phase rotation so if you see this picture here you can see in the top we have phase a is reaching to its peak then b and then c so the phase rotation is a b c and here you can see the phase A is reaching first to its max and then B and then C phase rotation is again A B C so you can see the C is coming first we will not take it as a reference so we'll take the first reference quantity first so this is A after that B and then C is coming so here can you identify the phase sequence what is the phase sequence or phase rotation for this type this waveform so you use the same rule 
so you can see phase i will take the reference phase a so i will write a here first and then c is coming to max value so I will then i will write c a c and then b is coming so the phase sequence for this waveform is a c b so you can't determine the phase rotation with a phase star diagram unless you know the universal rule in the relay testing world that all phases rotates counterclockwise. So you can see this is the rotation. As I told you, we are always drawing the vector phasers in this direction. We are not drawing the phasers in the opposite direction. So this is basically the principle and you have to keep it in mind that phasers always rotate in the counterclockwise direction. Phase sequence is measured by a device that's called as a phase sequence meter. So you can see this is a phase sequence device. So you have to connect all three phases voltages to this device. And then you can see it is showing two different rotations clockwise and anti-clockwise. So this is another device which is used for the detecting the phase sequence. Alpha operator. So the alpha operator is basically a shorthand method to represent the phase shift uh, of a difference of 120 degrees. Alpha operator has a unity at 120 degree value uh, degrees. So you can see alpha can be represented by one at the angle 20 degrees. So alpha is at the is equal to one at the angle 120 degrees. And if you convert into rectangle component, it will be equal to minus 0 0.5 plus j 0 0.866. Similarly, alpha square it will be equal to 1 at the angle uh, 240 and it will be equal to minus 0 0.5 into j 0 0.866. So it means that if we have a balanced three phase systems, so if I want to show it either by the meaning of alpha, so it will be equal to BA for example, then we have at 120 degrees VB. And then we have at 240 degrees VC. So I can represent this by alpha and this value by alpha square. Okay. And it means that VA is equal to, or we can write VB is equal to alpha into VA and vc is equal to alpha square into va or we can also write here that vc is equal to alpha into vb so this is uh, the way by which you can use the alpha operator and it will give an, a shorthand method to represent the vectors so now if you calculate VAC once again. So VAC will be equal to VA minus VC and we know that VC is equal to alpha square into VA. So if you write VA VC if I put this one is equal to alpha square into VA. So if I put this one, it will be equal to VA 1 minus alpha square. So VAC will equal to 1 minus alpha square. So again, if you have alpha, alpha we know that alpha is equal to alpha is equal to 1 at the angle 120 degrees so it's an operator will shift the vector to 120 degrees further so if i draw this first of all i have to draw one so one equal to this one for example one at the angle zero and then alpha is this one alpha square is as we know that this is the alpha square which is at 240 degrees so this is the alpha square so this is the alpha square for example, this is 1 here at the angle 0 and this is alpha. Alpha square is equal to 1 at the angle 240. So if I want to make it minus alpha, so I have to, again, you have to use the head to tail rule here again. So I will make it, uh, 
you can see a mirror image to make it minus alpha this is minus alpha square and again if you put the head to tail rule you have to shift this factor to the head of the another vector if you want to add so then again if you add these two you will get here so let me use green here first so you will get this vector okay so again if you remember this vector here is you can see this is 120 degrees so this is 180 degree in total because it is a mirror so this will be equal to 60 degrees and this is exactly the half so it will be 30 degrees and if you measure this this is 1.732 because this is the under root 3 that we we know that from where it came so we can see 1 minus alpha square will be equal to 1.732 at the angle 30 degrees so this is the exactly the same equation that we draw before using the polar system so you can res uh, we have now resolved the symmetrical components by mean of alpha uh, we have done the calculations of vac by using an alpha operator so this is it has given you an idea that how alpha operator works so if we try to find out more relationship related to alpha so if i draw this line this is representing one at the angle zero if i multiply it with alpha so if i shift make a shift of alpha then this will be my alpha this will be at one at the angle of 120 degrees and then again i will add 120 degree further so alpha square will be equal to 1 at the angle 240 degrees or minus 120 degrees so both are the same if i again multiply with with alpha so again you will get at the same position so 360 degrees so alpha cube so you can see alpha cube is equal to 1 or is equal to 1 at the angle 0 degree centigrade not centigrade 0 degrees so if i draw here minus alpha so minus alpha will be somewhere here so this is my minus alpha and this will be my minus alpha square and this will be equal to minus 1 or minus minus alpha cube so if you now know the symmetrical components and if you know now know the very simple head to tail rule method that i have told you and you know how to make it a differential matrix so you will be know that how these things works so this is minus alpha so here you can see if you want to add these two vectors you will get now if you want to make the sum of alpha 1 minus alpha square so it will be somewhere here so you can see 1 minus alpha square here so this will be equal to 1 minus alpha square okay so this is my 1 minus alpha square and this will be at the angle 30 degrees this i, I already explained how it came so this is 1 minus alpha square okay so if you want to make 1 minus alpha so 1 minus alpha will be somewhere here so similarly you can draw all the relationships and you can find out all the values so you can see here i have started with 1 if you multiply it with alpha you shift the vector by alpha so this is 1 at the angle 120 degrees then further you have shifted 120 degrees so alpha square is equal to 1 at the angle 240 or minus 120 if you shift again 120 so you will coming back alpha cube which is equal to 1 so this is a simple method so then next is you need to make a minus vector values so this is alpha the so minus will be in reverse direction so i have make it alpha square so alpha square you can see will be equal to 1 at the angle it's very simple it will be equal to 60 degrees So similarly you can find out the other relationships 
which is 1 minus alpha square as I told you before which is 1.732 under root 3 at the angle 30 degrees. In the same way you can calculate 1 minus alpha which is at under root 3 at the angle minus 30 degrees and alpha square minus alpha under root 3 at the angle 90 degrees. So when you are doing calculations for the symmetrical components so these all values will come up and then you can simply replace these values with this relationships and you can find out the values in the result. So this is an alpha operator that's a very interesting operator to understand. Now we will understand another uh, value. So the next value that uh, equation we want to understand which is equal to 1 plus alpha plus alpha square is equal to 0. So we will understand this one. So first of all you need to draw 1. So this is 1 means 1 at the angle 0 degrees. Then you need to draw alpha which means 1 at the angle 120 degrees. So this is 1, this is alpha by using the hat to tail rule and alpha square which is equal to 1 at the angle 240 degrees. So this is 0 to 240 will be somewhere here. So you have to draw this angle. So you, if you add this one, you can see the resultant here is 0. So if you know the hat to tail rule, you, you just it will be easier to you to understand this relationship of alpha. So here you can see this is equal to 1 plus alpha plus alpha square. So adding all these three values, you are getting the result 0. So this is another relationship for the alpha operator. So how you can calculate the symmetrical components? So symmetrical components, for example, positive sequence, you can calculate by adding VA plus alpha VB. So you have to shift the phase B to 120 degrees further and alpha square VC. So you need to shift the phase C vector to 240 degrees further from where it is. So this will form positive sequence component for the symmetrical component. So negative sequence component will be equal to 1.3 VA plus alpha square VB plus alpha VC. Similarly, Z sequence component will be equal to 1 upon 3 VA plus VB plus VC. So it will be VA here. So again, similarly, you can form the equation here, which is VA. If you want to construct the original components from the symmetrical components, so you can see VA is equal to VA1 positive sequence component of phase A, VA2 negative sequence component of phase A and V0 which is zero sequence component of phase A. So similarly VB is equal to alpha square VA1 plus alpha VA2 plus alpha plus VA0. So actually it is VA1, it is VB1 plus VB2 and plus VB0. But we know that these are the balance systems. So VA0 is equal to VB0. So we have replaced the value VB in terms of VA. So we have put the value here VA0. Similarly, VA2 is equal to alpha VB, VB2 is equal to alpha VA2. So we have put the values here once again. So it's again alpha VA2 in terms of VA. And then similarly, VB1 is equal to alpha square VA1. So we have put all the values in terms of A using uh, alpha operator. So similarly, C is equal to alpha A1 plus alpha square A2 plus alpha VA0. So we have here another sheet that's basically is used to draw the symmetrical components vector instantaneously. So you, we have put the some values here like VA is equal to 40.83 at the angle of minus 120 degrees. VB is equal to 101.1 at the angle minus 285 and VC is equal to 65.56 at the angle of minus 60 degrees. So if you put these values so you can get the results. You can see these are the vectors. So this is our main phase and you can see these are the three symmetrical 
components that we have just added here to make the formation so if i make the system 100 100 100 0 minus 120 into 120 so we have perfectly balanced system here so then we like to see different components here so you can see we doesn't have any component except the positive sequence component that is available in the system so you can see here we have zero zero sequence component we have zero negative sequence we have only positive sequence component over here in our calculations so if i make it unbalanced for example i will reduce the phase b voltage to 50 here so you can see we have unbalanced systems so in that case you can see now we have this is your sequence component okay and uh, you can see this one here is uh, is one component which is basically this is negative sequence component here and this one is zero sequence component this is the zero sequence component here and again this is the zero sequence component over here this one is zero sequence component so you can see this sheet is successfully breaking the main unbalanced systems into three balance systems and also showing the sum at the same time so let me make a more exper ex experiments here so if i make only one quantity here so we have only one phaser so you'll see you can see you have only one phaser here and you can see this is the symmetrical component if we have one phaser only so all three components has the magnitude 33.33 here you can see all three components are available here and if you sum up you will get this single component all together so this is very interesting sheet to learn and understand so impact of negative sequence on the generator so if generator is facing a negative sequence it will increase the vibration and heating up of the generator or even of the motor and the generator and motor will start to heat up even beyond the thermal curve so if the even the currents or load on the generator is less but the generator is still heating up it is showing that the generator is subjected to negative sequence component so these negative sequence components will not show up in the magnitude if you see through the ammeters you need to see the angles you need to see the magnitude and then you need to decompose these components to know that this heating is taking place because of negative sequence and this is the reason it means that you can put the generator up to certain negative sequence variable limit so this negative sequence is created by the unbalanced load subjected to the generators so the, all the manufacturers they are providing this setting for the negative sequence for the generators so what negative sequence is doing negative sequence is producing a magnetic flux which is rotating in the reverse direction to the positive sequence flux so it means that now rotor is subjected to two different fluxes which in turn increasing the frequency twice in the rotor so if the frequency is twice it means that the skin effect will be also increased because of this skin effect the frequency is high the current will tend to flow at the outer skins of the conductor in the rotor and the hence it will decrease effective cross-sectional area of the conductor and it will increase the resistance of the rotor if the resistance rotor resistance is increased then it will increase the heating effect i square or losses and a small negative sequence current will result in excessive heating of the generator and it can easily damage the generator as well so negative sequence is producing it means that torque that is inversely proportional or it is in, in the reverse direction to the positive sequence so 
what could be the reason here so we can see uh, we have seen an example that in a system when we went to this uh, production systems in the relay the relay has a function that is showing all the symmetrical components which is basically the measurement of the running system so we saw we have negative sequence is 10 amps which is 100 percent positive is zero and zero sequence is also zero so the relay was reporting that it has 100 percent negative sequence and zero positive sequence and zero zero sequence so what could be the reason behind this so the reason behind this was actually that if you swap the primary windings it mean if you have three phases a b c if one phase is swapped and it is connected to the relay the relay will see all the phasers are rotating in the reverse direction so if the two phases are swapped inside the relay or the wires connected to the relay or at the primary side then the relay will read all the current to a negative sequence current although there is no negative sequence current in practical might be only the problem could be in the secondary side but the relay will read if you connect a wrong leads or if the primary is connected wrongly then the relay will lead, read all the current as a negative sequence so even if you don't have a phase sequence meter then even you can see the sequence of components in the system and you can see this that the direction is now reversed so what will happen if you feed the wrong phase sequence to the relay so the system in which you are could have the phase sequence the natural phase sequence of the fundamental frequency or the main uh, system uh, voltage and currents could be abc and acb so if you feed the wrong phase sequence to the relay then the relay will not read the correct sequence components so it will read positive sequence component as negative sequence and negative sequence component as a positive sequence so you need to check that what is a basically philosophy or condition defined in the relay and you have to select the phase sequence uh, wisely so what will happen if the i2 is, is become greater than i1 in any case so as i told you the i2 is basically creating the direction of uh, basically flux is produced rotating flux is in opposite direction to the positive sequence flux so if in th in any case theoretically if i2 is become greater than i1 then the motor will start to rotate in in reverse direction because now the forces that are being generated by the negative sequence current are now become more than the positive sequence current so this was a uh, introduction to symmetrical components I